Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at the high grade Revive Saku. It's a 2020 release and one that was really needed. I've covered the original high grade Saku previously and I wouldn't say it's a bad kit, just an old one. 17 years old at the time this kit was released, the difference between the two being night and day. If you haven't built this kit, it features an all plastic construction, has revised proportions that are still anime accurate, and overall better articulation. The comparison isn't even fair and it's a contender for the best Saku kit. It isn't at the top of my list, but if it's at yours, I can see why. I'm actually reusing this footage since I'm painting the green Saku revive. The two kits are virtually identical, the green one just has a slightly different backpack without the top thrusters. I would have liked to see the leg mounted rockets or cracker grenades included, but admittedly, I rarely use them even when I do get them. I like the look of the green plastic though, I have built the Shah Revive several times but this is the first time I built this one and was really impressed with the colors, even if the color scheme is a simple one. I primed with Mr. Surfacer 1000 and sprayed a coat of Tamiya TS42 light gunmetal. While you see me paint these frame parts, I wanted to cover the plan I have for this project. I'm going to base this paint scheme off the first Zaku I painted, something I've since called the sunset color scheme since I based the colors off a literal sunset. I cover the painting in one of the first Gumpla videos I made, although the Zaku was thrown in as an afterthought while the main focus of that video was on a tank. I've since made that video private, it wasn't the greatest, and I actually focused on mixing up primary colors as I covered a pretty new paint at the time, Hataka Hobby's Blue Line Acrylics, which were supposed to have a formula specific for hand painting. The paints weren't very good, and I had to make it a weather build pretty much by default. But this is a concept I want to do at the end of every year, since that video came out 2 years ago around this time, revisiting one of the first custom paint jobs I did and offering a newer take on the same concept as I grow my skill set. In this first installation, I'm keeping it simple and just seeing how far I've come in weathering. I can't really overstate how important that first Saku was. Before this build, I painted kits in the anime colors or if I did a custom paint scheme, it drew heavily on my armor modeling background with military colors and markings. This was the build that influenced my current view on how I paint Gunpla, using bold bright colors because I can while keeping a real world feel with weathering. The Sunset Zaku colors features large amounts of orange growing darker as you go down the mobile suit. I'm starting with the first and lightest of these shades. While mixing up this color, I started off with the mixture I used on the Act Zaku video, but added in some yellow to lighten it up. This mixture did end up being a little paler than I originally wanted, but I'm just rolling with it so I don't have to strip any paint. This paint took 4 coats to get the coverage I wanted, orange is a pretty difficult color to hand paint and acts very weird. Whenever paint is wet, I'll move it around with my brush to avoid pooling, but whenever I tried this, I would remove almost all the paint, probably from it being too thick. Finding that sweet spot is hard for orange, especially since for a lot of these mixtures, it's my first time working with them. I don't like planning things out too much, since that kills a lot of the fun that comes with experimentation. Something I do to help achieve an even result is wait for the paint to dry almost completely, then I'll get a thin coat of the paint and cover the entire surface, applying no pressure while doing so. I just sort of touch the brush to the paint, and let the paint flow off of it onto the part. Now I'm painting the second orange which will go on the skirt armor. While mixing this paint, I was constantly comparing how it looked to the first mixture to get an orange which was of course darker but not too dark. I am simplifying the paint job by removing one of the oranges so getting the right shade is very apparent. Looking back on the process, it may have been helpful to paint the legs first which will be a red shade and then going back 
mixing a color which is a nice midpoint between that and the first orange. But I do like how this color ended up, and because it's a little darker, it was easier to work with. The skirt pieces have simpler geometries as well, which does help the painting. As this color dried, I noticed that the German orange in the mixtures made the resulting colors a bit more subdued. This in combination with the grey I used on the frame made the entire thing look kind of desaturated, which I am not a problem with and it'll help you know, bridge the gap between the paintwork and the weathering quite nicely. Now I'm painting the mono eye. The surrounding area is painted with German grey. It's a nice dark grey which I use instead of black and it gives the feeling of dark shadows which will emphasize the pink of the eye. I then paint the eye with a mixture of equal parts pink and fluorescent pink. I added the mono eye myself which is something I need to cover in a future video since my method has changed a little bit. The kit comes with a sticker for the mono eye and making a raised one myself is the only modification I did to this kit. I don't know why Bandai stopped molding raised mono eyes, they make painting so much easier. And before I started making my own, I would actually paint this sticker, which is a bit difficult as you can imagine. I'm painting the head a bluish grey, in the original I used almost a sky blue, but since the oranges are a bit more subdued, I use a lot of grey tones in this mixture. The result is a colour I really like, and one which was super easy to work with. A nice little escape from those oranges. Now I'm painting the red. If you actually pay attention to the mixing ratios I include, you'll see that this one is kind of weird. I have actually gotten comments on how my mixing ratios can come off as unnecessarily complicated. And while I do try to make these mixes as simple and as scalable as possible, like I said before, I never plan anything out, which is why they can turn out the way they do. I very rarely use the same mixes over and over again, which is why I'm fine with the complicated numbers and don't have the need to further simplify things. I do like this color though, it reminds me of a cherry starburst, and I think it would work well for char asthma colors if I added some pink. Maybe make it a 2 to 1 ratio, 2 parts of this mixture, and 1 part pink. It is interesting that the mixture is almost equal parts orange and red, yet this color is very much positively red. When I look at the color on this finished kit, I see no orange at all, which just shows how dominant Vallejo's red actually is. Before I bought their standard red, I used different shades of red which were a little lacking, at least for the lighter shades. But this one is perfect for me, it has so much pigment. We're finally at the bottom of the Zaku, and I need a purple for it. On the original, I used a very reddish purple, but I want a purple with some blue tones because of the blue head. I started off creating a similar color to the one I used on the Shiden build, the only difference being the purple I used in that mixture. I then add a small amount of blue just because the paint was looking too grey. I also used this color for the shield. The shield was something I planned on changing the color for. I think I was planning on a darker orange, but that would have made the purple feel too out of place. This purple does look weird if you're just comparing how it pairs with the red, but I think its real value happens when you step back and look at the entire color scheme as a whole. The last part of painting is a star on the chest. In the original, the star is very thick, probably because I didn't plan it out that much. So this time, I paint a cross and then fill in the star around it, something I learned when painting the Ashamar. I start off painting the star very thin, and then just outline it with paint to thicken it up. I'm doing some physical chipping using metal tweezers. In my experience, this step is the one that really transforms the build and can save it from the scrap pile, especially if I'm working with colors that have the potential to be problematic, as orange so often is. 
I've used several tools in the past for this effect, but have really narrowed it down to the tweezers. Tweezers have a bit of spring, and I can use this to create chipping by bouncing them along the surface of the model, which keeps the effect random. I can also use them to create paint scrapes. Physical chipping is easier than painting on your paint chips. I've also never had the problem of the chips being too large and out of scale, which is the main disadvantage when you're working with paint. It's also the most realistic chipping option for obvious reasons. I'm also doing some edge wear using my hobby knife. I make sure to use the sides and the back of the blade instead of the blade itself, so I don't slice down to the primer or the plastic. This is a very satisfying step, and it's really easy to overdo because of it. So to achieve a more realistic result, I don't hit an entire edge, but only bits and pieces of an edge. On a similar note, I try to keep the edge wear varied and not a mirror image of each other. I sprayed a coat of Mr. Super Clear Semi-Gloss, and now I'm doing a pin wash to highlight all the details and add some dimensionality. In this small of a scale, I like to keep my weathering as simple as possible, and a wash does a lot of heavy lifting. I'm applying it over semi-gloss just so it'll be neater, but if you add a wash over a flat surface, it'll spread out along the paintwork resulting in a grimy sort of effect, but I want this one neat just because the colors are so bright. The way I'm applying this is pretty tedious and a test of patience. It does help to have as fine of a brush as possible. The one I'm using is an 18 over 0. If your brush is super fine, it has two benefits. The first is that it'll make it easier to reach the details. The second is that because the brush is so fine, if you're a little bit off with the wash, it won't be seen as much, and you'll have less to clean up. On that note, whenever I load my brush with the wash, I'll get rid of a lot of excess, so I'm just working in small amounts. I don't thin the wash either because it's already at the perfect consistency where it'll flow into detail but not out of it and flood the model surface. Now I'm adding a patina with a mixture of black and brown washes. In the original Sunset Saku I did a similar thing but with oil paints, which you can definitely tell if you look at that model under natural light. It has this slight sheen which you only get with oil paints, but I don't want that, so I'm sticking with acrylics. As you can see, I started off speckling with this dark brown wash mixture and just streak all the specks downwards with a flat brush. It's very simple and a great base layer for further weather effects if you choose to have them. Because the flat brush removes so much of the paint, I build this effect up with several passes. Between each application, I make sure to clean off my brush as not to introduce the wash back onto the model. And the brush I'm using is actually a filbert which I think is perfect for this. The wide flat shape removes a lot of paint at once, and it's not a completely uniform shape, and has a curve at the top which creates a little variation in how the streaks form. I gave the model a coat of Mr. Super Clear Flat, and I wanted to add some streaks of filth on the chest sides. On the original, I tried this, but they were out of scale and looked terrible. Very large and thick. I am working with acrylics like on the original, but to avoid the streaks being out of scale, I'm constantly working with them over and over again. First, I'll draw the streak and clean up the edges, making it as thin as possible. And if I feel the effect could be emphasized a little more, I'll add a small amount of paint on top of the part and vertically shriek it down. And if I wanted even more work time, I could have done this before the flat coat, but I don't really need to since I'm doing this on small areas at a time. And when I work on the other side of the chest, I'm making sure not to have a mirrored effect, just for realism and interest. The final part to paint is the weapons. I'm going ahead and painting the entire Saka machine gun in German grey, which is different from my usual basalt grey, but I do paint the magazine green grey as usual. I like this consistency, and it's a neat little way of communicating whether or not a build is mine. I also paint the body of the Heat Hawk German grey, and I use black for the power pipe. I then give the weapons a black wash, covering the entire part. I let the wash sit for about a minute, and then I remove the excess with a paper towel. 
it's a quick way to add a wash to a model, although it can remove too much paint. I am applying very little pressure while removing the paint to try and avoid this, but I do have to go back in some areas like those lines on the side of the drum magazine. It's time to paint the Heat Hawk blade. The orange you see already is the first one I used on the Saku since I had to paint some of the extra hand parts. It is, of course, the lightest one we used. Now I'm adding some fluorescent orange mixed with some other oranges to add a subtle glow. The mixture combines the glow of the fluorescent paint while allowing sort of even coverage with the normal orange. And this is a mixture I picked up or at least the idea for the mixture I picked up when painting the model eye since I do mix fluorescent pink with normal pink. This is also a pretty new way of painting heat hawk blades for me. I've always used metallic colors but I am preferring this method. And after the weapons, the model is done. Here's the original Sunset Zaku painted two years ago. And here is my newest interpretation of it. I really like how it turned out. The newer colors are a bit darker and more subdued than the original, which lends itself to the weathered look nicely. I also think that the subtle weathering makes it feel more refined as well, and it's interesting seeing how my style has evolved so far. As usual, this is a look into my own process rather than an explicit list of things you should be doing with your own Gumpla. If you like the video, consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, and subscribing. I want to thank you all for watching and supporting the relaunch of this channel, and I'll be seeing you with a new video in the new year, whenever that is.